Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to this Bible study or this lesson today as we make a, get into another video, get into God's Word one more time, and I see what He has to tell us today. And I know it's already know it's going to be great because it always is. And it's the greatest instruction we will ever hear in this life. And it's the only truth we have. And it's the only truth that will take us home one day after a while. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you, Lord, with a thankful heart to thank you for another day. Thank you for another time and opportunity you gave us to sit down to get in your word for just a little while. I pray, O oh Lord, you anoint these lips of clay and give us wisdom that we can speak your word with understanding to help us all, myself included, to draw closer to you. And Lord, I pray today that you pour out your spirit upon everyone that listens to this video and fill them with joy and not let them know they are ready to meet you and feel your spirit up running up moving up and down the avenues their body and their soul and their bloodstream that there will be no shadow of a doubt whatsoever that it's you in their heart and lord i pray oh lord to draw us all closer to you give us a greater hunger and desire to follow you be obedient to your word that we may speak this word to someone else that's lost to someone that's drifted away from you that they will come back. And we won't forget to give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy. Today we're going to be reading from St. Saint, Saint John, chapter 17. And this was a great prayer of our Lord and Savior. What he was still down here before he went to the cross. And we need to take very pay very close attention to how he prays here and take it to heart because it just the important day as it was the day he prayed this prayer for his disciples and those that love him those that are saved by his grace we're also his disciples saint john chapter 17 King James Version Bible, and verse number one. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And notice how he said that verse. I'm going to read verse number two again, so that we will get how he spoke these words. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. If the Lord has given us unto Jesus, there's not enough devils to pluck us out of Jesus' hand, and no man can pluck us out of the Father's hand. Verse 3, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. My friend today, it's sad, but it's true. Many, many today don't know who Jesus is. And many know of him, but they don't know him as their personal Savior. My friend, there has to be a great change take place in our hearts and our lives in order us to know Jesus as our Savior. 
Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. In other words, Jesus, God's Son, for he fulfilled the mission that he came to do. To die, to give his life on the cross of Calvary, and he did that. And he was telling them, telling here, us here in John, that everything that the Lord had spoken will be fulfilled to the letter, to the jot, to every I be dotted, every T will be crossed. Now listen what it says. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He's asking the Father to glorify him again. Although he's already glorified, he's asking the Father to glorify him again. And it did because he loved us that much. That he did and he was willing to go to the cross and die for our sins, to pay our sin debt in full, the debt that he did not owe, but a debt we owed and could not pay. He did it for us on that old rugged cross of Calvary. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Just pay a close attention how he's a praying here today. And my friend, the same prayer. He was pray praying for them then. He's praying for us today because we are his, because he paid that price for us on the cross. He died for our sin. He spilled, shed his blood that covered us and covered our sins and washed our sins away and forgive us of our sins and made us a fit subject for heaven, my friend, and we owe him all the praise, we owe him all the glory and honor that we can possibly give, and be a praying that we can give him some more, because he is worthy, my friend, all the praise and honor and glory that we can give him in his life. I know we're weak, we're just in the flesh, but my friends, we can glorify him through the Spirit, through loving him and obeying him and keeping his commandments and sharing this gospel to the lost and dying world that he called us to do. We don't have to be a pastor. We don't have to be a preacher to share God's word. Therefore, we are all ministers of the gospel to each other, to our families, to our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends whoever we have the opportunity to speak to. And my friend, if we're sincere about it, the Lord will make a way that we will have an opportunity to speak to others about the Lord Jesus and about their soul and where they are headed if they don't get saved before it's too late. And I pray it be a wonderful day today for somebody to get saved. It'd be a wonderful day for somebody to turn their life around and repent and go back to God and start their walk over with the Lord Jesus. In other words, go back to the altar and do the first works over and repent and get back on the road that was, that is right, that is straight, and follow it all the way through because Jesus is the way, he's the truth and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through and by Jesus Christ. And no other name under heaven whereby it's given for a man to be saved than the Lord Jesus Christ. Now verse 7, Now they have known that all things whatsoever they have given me 
are of thee. In other words, they know every good thing given him that come from the Father. Verse 8, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. He's right, he wrote down, gave us the words that the Father gave him. My friend, he obeyed the Father and he, he spoke the word. He to, his Father told him to speak that we could understand how we could walk with him and how much we needed him in this life, my friend. But we've got to be saved to understand really how much we needed him. We didn't know how much we needed him until we got saved therefore if we know we have been saved let's give him glory give him some honor give him some praise by being faithful to him and i know some don't like to mention the lifting up hands my friend what's wrong with lifting our hands to the lord's heaven and giving him praise honor and glory and ask him to reach down and get our hands and hold our hands my friend, if we we'll reach up to him, my friend, he'll reach down to us, my friend, and reaching and raising our hands is raising if we raise them for the right reason, it is surrendering ourselves, our lives to him. And I don't know who else we need to surrender our life to except the Lord Jesus Christ, because he can keep it my friend, and he can present us safely before the Father one day after a while. Therefore, let us glorify him and praise him if we know we have been saved. And let's be seeking him every day of our life, not just once in a while, but every day, and see what he has to tell us in his word to keep us walking, keep us, uh, keep us looking for him, keep us desiring and hunger to walk with him. And be filled with his Holy Spirit. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me a believed in the Father, as he believed in the Father, also we believed in the Father, and we know that he came forth from the Father, my friend. Therefore, we got to have both Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. These three, their unity of the Godhead body, the Trinity of the Godhead body, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My friend, we can't have one without the, uh, having the other, other two. We can't deny one without denying the other two. In other words, if we deny one, we deny it all. My friend, today, let's wake up the truth to God's word. Let's, let's lean on him and hold him. Hold his nail-scarred hands and keep walking with him and he'll lead us. He'll take us through and pre present us safely for the Father one day after a while. So let us look in this word and see what he has to tell us. Let's feast on this word that he's feeding us that we can grow in the knowledge and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and grow in that spirit. Verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, the world, the ones that still haven't made up their mind. They want to serve the Lord Jesus. They don't want to serve God. They want to continue in the world. Therefore, he said he wasn't praying for them, that he was praying for us, those that have been redeemed, those that have been saved that he, they will be kept in his word, that they will know how to follow him and put their faith and trust and hope in him because he has the key to eternal life. He is our eternal life. He's our salvation and all we need and our all and all. Verse 10, And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. It's still uh, talking this is still Jesus prayer as he was a praying here how far he disciples even for you and I if we've been saved we are his disciples my friends have been redeemed and bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary we became his disciples 
Verse 11, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. He knew he was going to soon return to the Father that where he came from because he knew that he was going to soon be uh, cut down. He knew he would soon be uh, nailed to that cross. Uh, he knew he would soon be laid in that tomb, my friend. But he also knew that he would raise victorious over. He'd come victorious out of that grave that he would not be holding to the death uh, he wouldn't have to stay in that tomb but he knew he would leave that tomb and go back to the father my friend today therefore he was a praying to the father for us that the father would keep us my friend how often have we praised him how often have we thanked him today my friend let's look into god's word and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. The Father, God the Heavenly Father, will honor the request of his Son, my friends. If we'll follow the Lord Jesus, uh, if we'll allow Him to be our Savior, if we'll be saved, if we'll come back to Him, He will be our Savior, He will be our Father, and the Father will protect us, and He will keep us. Verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That son of perdition he's speaking of right here is a devil himself because he is the only one that was predestined to go to the lake of fire which is called hell because it was prepared and made for him because his pride took him over and he fell to pride. He thought he'd take over God's throne. He thought he could take the place of God. My friend, therefore his pride cost him eternal life. See, one time he was an angel, but his pride got the best of him. It took him down. Now he had, he was turned over, he was made a devil, and he's still the devil today. And my friend, he's doing everything he can to tear down the church, tear down those that are saved. Those are trying to preach the gospel to the lost and dying world to get them saved and get those to come back to him that straight away because he wants to rob from all the blessings and he knows he can't get them out of God's hand but he knows he caused them to lose a lot of blessings along the way and he's a thief and a robber. He has been again, has been from the beginning. The same as he's a murderer from the beginning. 13, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy, they, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Feel the joy that the Lord fell, and knowing he's returning to the Father, that he would suffer no more. My friend, there is joy today in God's born again people, that knowing when this life is over, they have a better home to go to. They have a better promise. My friend, we have a promise of assurance of eternal life in with peace and joy in heaven forevermore to live with the Son. But my friend, we got to be saved to have that promise. Verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the word hath he I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not 
of the world. They hate us because we're not of the world. We're having to live in the world, but we're not of the world. We're God's child. We're God's redeemed. We're the God. We're the saved that's ready to go home in the morning. But we have to wait here and linger till He kill He till He calls us. But God will take care of us. The Lord will take care of us while we travel on as we make our journey on towards the prize of high calling of God in Christ Jesus that Paul spoke about. My friend today, let us rejoice again, I say, and let us rejoice that our name is written in the last book of life. She said, I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them. The world hates us today because we love the Lord. They can see it. They know it. But they hate us because they are of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. He wasn't praying that they would die, that the Lord would take them out of this world. But he, he, he said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Keep them and protect them from the evil that is around us, to protect us from that. That's what the, Jesus was asking the Father to do for us, my friends. And why couldn't we love Jesus a little bit more today than we loved him yesterday? Because he tells us more and more how much he loved us. There ain't no man on this earth can love, love us that much that he would go to the cross and die for our sins when he had committed no sin. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. To save the redeemed one, they're living in the world, but they're not of the world. He said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth through this word of this holy Bible, my friend, the word, the one that people want to discard and throw it away and walk on, walk, trample it under their feet, my friend, those trample under the word, on the word of God are trampling over his blood, my friend, let's not trample on the word, let's, let's lean into the word, let's accept it into our heart and believe it with everything we got and lean on the Lord Jesus Christ and let him be our guide. Let him lead us and direct our path and ask him to show us the way that we may be able to make it because we cannot live it within our own self. He has to live it through us. Verse 18 As thou hast sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world. He sent us into the world to witness to those that are out of the way, those that are lost, those that are straight away, to speak the gospel to the lost and dying world. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, they believe, they can believe that the Father has sent him because he sent us and they see the love of the Lord. They see the Spirit uh, working and operating through us if we're willing and obedient to walk with the Word and share this gospel. Verse 22, And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Think about this now, my friends. Think about this strongly and heartily. What he has said here, how much he loves us, what he has done for us that accepted him as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he was bleeding, pleading for us to come in and when that Holy Spirit was to draw in us. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, 
that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. My friends, our love will bear witness of each other. My friend, whether it's close by or many miles away, the Lord knows how to unite that spirit. He knows how to unite that love. Make us all feel alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. Make us feel as one brother and sister in Christ. And the closeness of the spirit will be as one. And then when we begin to pray for something, we'll unite in prayer as one. And my friend, when we do that, then God is going to hear our prayer and he's going to answer because he's, all, he's answering our prayer by answering the son, his prayer of his son. My friend, his prayer he pray, his son prays, he will honor, he will answer, and he will keep them. Twenty-four, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may be, may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. They will, he wants said now, he said, I will, Father, I will, that they also whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, that they may look upon me and see my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world ha hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Those that are saved by the grace of God know that God has sent him, has sent his Son down here to this low land of sin and sorrow to bleed and bleed and die on the cross to pay our sin debt in full, the debt we owed and could not pay, the debt he paid that he did not owe, that we could go free, that we could have a better home and glory. One day after a while, when this life is over, and my friend, if this ain't worth it, there's nothing is. 26, in the last verse of this chapter, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. We we'll all be together in unity as one. one. We we'll be in Him, and He will be in us, as the Father and the Son are in one. My friend, we are the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and us that's it, been redeemed are as one. We're in the same unity as one. That's why we can pray together and seek the Lord together. He will answer because we will be praying in unity and believing He is the Son of God and He will answer our prayers according to His riches and glory, according to His love, His mercy He had toward us. So my friend, let's look closely into these words and thank God for this prayer that Jesus relayed and prayed that we could hear and see and believe what he said, how that same prayer was for us today. Help us to rejoice in our Savior and our Lord and that great love he has for us today to yet forgive us when we stray, when we get out of the way, when we do things and say things we should not say. He still loves us and he still forgive us. So let us never be afraid to pray and ask His forgiveness. And we'll be blessed along the way. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you with a thankful heart to thank you for many blessings. We thank you for another day, another time you've given us to come out and give you your word just a little while. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the scripture you laid on our heart today, Lord. And I praise you, I give you honor, I give you the glory. 
And I know, Lord, your word will not return void to where you sent it. And I know you're sending it to someone today. I don't know who, when, who, but I know you're sending it to someone today. And you send it to someone that's drifted away, that's wanting to come back. Lord, this would be a great day for them to get saved. This would be a great day for them to come back. And Lord, I pray it draw us all closer to you. You let your spirit bubble to, uh, and in our soul and our body and our mind that we can feel your spirit running up and down the avenues of our soul and our body and our bloodstream. And Lord, I pray today it will keep us walking faithfully to you and looking forward to meeting you one day after a while. And now, Lord, we pray for those that's lost and undone that don't know you as their Savior, Lord. I pray you send your drawing spirit to them one more time. Give them another opportunity to accept you before it's too late. Because we don't want no one to leave this world unprepared to meet you. And Lord, today we pray for those that's sick in the body and afflicted. That you reach down, heal, deliver, and set free. But Lord, if it's not your will, if you can set them free or heal them. You let them still be a witness to those around them. Those seas are suffering. That how they can still be faithful to you. And rejoice in your love. That they can be a witness also through that. And Lord, I pray for each one of us today, walk closer and closer to you. And Lord, and when you get ready to call us away from this world, Lord, we can hear you say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Your work and labor on earth is done now. You can come on to live with me and dwell with me in my kingdom forevermore and take your rest because your labor is done. And Lord, when we get there, we can bow our head and step aside and give you the praise and honor and glory we can't give here today. And I also pray that you'll save someone today before this day ends. And Lord, when we get there, we can glorify you forevermore. And we can sing and tell the old story. How we're saved by grace and how you gave your life for us on Calvary's cross. That we could be saved, that you redeemed us. But with your blood and your great love. And Lord, we be able to walk maybe beside that river of life. And yes, rest under the shade of that evergreen tree, because we'll be there for ages. While the ages roll on, there will be no end to that joy and peace that's waiting over there. But Lord, I know we have to be clean before we make it there. Now, Lord, one more time, I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your wonderful grace.